Hello, hey I everyone. Welcome to the next session of SAP ABAP on HANA training. And thank you for choosing ZK Tutorials. In the last couple of sessions, we have discussed about the concept of SAP HANA. We discussed about what is code to paradigm. We have seen the concepts of in-memory database. We talked about how and why SAP HANA because of it's because of reduction in memory cost with high computing power with a less amount of memory. We also talked about how SAP HANA have evolved to show the product line of all the SAP product. We also talked about the use cases of SAP HANA came up with. In today's session, we will discuss the architecture of SAP HANA. All right, let's go back. Once we will quickly discuss about the introduction of HANA. So it's an in-memory computing engine. What are the components parts of SAP HANA? So SAP HANA is a platform architecture. So now SAP HANA is not just a database. It's more than that. And that's why it is a platform. Now this platform includes so many powerful features and so many powerful components which we will be discussing in this session so now let's start so as i told you sap hana is a platform architecture so why sap hana is called a platform because it's not more than it's not just a database it's more than that what more than that means here you can see Okay, what does this more than that? Because as I told you, because it's not it's not just a database, it HANA is more than data database. What does this mean? So this is our let's take this is our database. So the first component as part of SAP S4 HANA comes into the picture is called Access Engine. What is Access stand for? Access stands for Extended Server. That's the first component of SAP HANA platform have, which is called as Access Engine. So this is called Access Engine, Extended Engine Server. Okay, Extended Engine Server. What does this mean? It means there is a lightweight application server which is embedded inside the inside of HANA. So HANA being a data store, it stores the data. SAP also introduced a lightweight server just like your ABAP. SAP HANA also introduced a lightweight server just like your ABAP. We run our uh, we run on application, we run our programs on application layer NetWeaver. Application layer and NetWeaver is the correct technical world, world for ABAP platform. Similarly, SAP HANA introduce another another inside another platform inside which is called as access engine don't compare this with a web application layer many of you immediately start thinking hey which means can i run my web program no you can't run your uh, web program on hana directly you need sap netweaver to run a web program but yet still you can run different other types of programs on SAP HANA. It provides you different runtime support, which we will be discussing now after some slides. But first, you can't run program. Just take an example. You can't run uh, a program in a notepad file directly. For example, if I will just uh, open a net for notepad. Okay, and try to write a error program. For example, let me declare one variable. Data uh, LV where one type 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 value. Okay, can I run this? Can I run this, guys? Is this possible that can I run my program here directly? I think uh, so. Everyone is clear with this. No, not possible. Why? Why not possible? Because it doesn't have a runtime. The notepad doesn't provide any runtime. It needs a runtime, and that runtime is provided by NetWeaver. What is NetWeaver? NetWeaver is just a technical platform which provides runtime for a web application. This is like engine which is running 
which is understanding it. So that engine is net weaver. Similarly, SAP HANA have light weight engine. Okay, inside that, inside that, that's why it is called as engine. And this engine understands different types of runtime. So basically, uh, okay. So basically, there are major four types of runtime supported. The first runtime, okay, is HTML5. Okay, the first runtime is known as HTML runtime. It's and uh, it supports supports Fury based apps. Second runtime which it supports is JRE, which is Java runtime environment. They have where we can run our Java based app. The third runtime is Google V8 engine. The Google V8 engine is another runtime which supports Node.js programming languages. And the fourth runtime is installed here on that is V8 engine. And the last and fourth runtime is bring your own build apps. Okay, so bring your own build apps inside of HANA and then you can start supporting other languages so that so that access engine is all about so access engine is a lightweight application server inside of sap hana which will support different variety and now only these runtimes are supported if you want to run a web program you need you need to have netweaver so that's called as sap hana access engine so SAP HANA Access Engine is Access is Extended Server. It's a lightweight application server which is embedded inside of HANA. Is it clear? So now let's move to the second component. The second component which comes up inside SAP HANA platform is, is Index Server. So this is actual in-memory computing engine. In-memory database is all about. So Index server, this is actual in-memory database and this is actual in-memory computing engine. This is the real database part of SAP HANA and also we will discuss this index server in the next slide in that. The third component in SAP HANA is name server. So what it is called? It's called name server. So suppose in SAP HANA, you are running very large corporation like HUL, Walmart, Tata, Reliance, like these types of companies. So one HANA box, which is even in double Excel size, supports up to thousands of GBs of memory. Now the data, now I'm just giving you an example there, okay. Now the data which this organization Old is just think it's very huge among us. Okay, you even can't imagine the data. These big organization like HUL, Walmart, Alliance, Tata, these have. We can't imagine the data. Yes, we can't imagine this. So they have. Okay, so that in that case, you have to run multiple HANA parallel instances which support huge data, and they have to coordinate between each other. So that's what the name server does. So what does this name server does? For example, if I will tell you again, well, uh, just take an example of Reliance or just take an example of data. Sorry, data, Tata. So uh, Tata may be having use, use data. And if we are having double Excel size of uh, HANA box, the HANA DB box, it will not support in one DB. We need multiple databases. So in case of, as here you can see, in case of distributed system for scaling, this component is the coordinator. So in the, uh, sorry, the this is the coordinator between those different, different, different databases. Is it clear? So in case of distributed systems for scaling the name server is the coordinator. So what is the name server? One word, it's a coordinator between the, one line answer is coordinator server between the different servers. Okay, so this name server coordinates everything. So this name server is a coordinator between all the servers. Okay, is it clear guys? Now let's move to the next component. The next component which comes is the script server in HANA. So what is the script server? This is, the, this is mainly to manage the other capabilities. 
what are these other capabilities basically they are having three components inside this which is in terms of other capabilities which hana additionally supports and these three sub components are first is pal okay second is afl okay are and third is eml sorry there is some mismatch in this slide okay uh, first is pl second is afl and third is eml what is this pl is pl is predictive analytics library what is this afl is application function library and then we have eml external machine learning library so enterprises are running their businesses since years and years and now suppose they want for example okay so enterprises are running their businesses since years and years and now suppose they want production of data <laughs> just one second sorry okay so enterprises are running their businesses since years and years and now suppose if they want to the production of data for example if just look into they just want to look into the past 10 years of data to find out hey what what was my total sales of laptop or total sales of mobile devices in my company then i can do that by looking at the past data for which i can do some predictions okay can be done for the future i can do fasting for my sales for my revenue for my next year targets so all those forecast forecastings can be done by this component so you can you can do predictive analytics you can do application function library which provide ready to use functions for predictions and then also you have eml which is external machine learning library algorithms uh, using eml okay library algorithm which allows you to have hana to connect to external machine learning libraries machine learning is the another field of ai artificial intelligence where you can probably go ahead and do some more predictions in a better way you can do image recognition you can do character recognition all of these are advanced things which are going on in the market as part of this but that's not the goal of this course we are not we will not be discussing about pal afl and eml in this course all right now let's move to the next component the next component is called the doc store document store component which is responsible for documents inside of sap hana so that's called the doc store component all right so what is this doc store is uh, which is uh, this component is responsible for the documents inside of sap hana so this is document store component and then comes small other components inside of sap hana works which includes integrations which includes integrations okay data life cycle management data lm tooling okay tooling components and then we have tooling support for tools for provisioning tools like pods okay this is for tooling support okay so we have tooling support for provisioning we have data life cycle management tools okay data life cycle management tools and we also have integration so these all are main component inside of of overall hana box is it clear and then the questions came up with hey how do we access the hana data box okay basically there are different tools to talk to hana or to connect with hana the first and foremost tool is which is very popular is hana studio this is the one tool to connect with hana for other tools which we have and the another tool which we have in the system is web ide hana web ide then the another tool which we have in abap system is like abap system like we have abap on hana so an abap on hana system would want to talk to your hana database or a bw Uh, system want to talk to hana database so these are all the different custom uh, customers which consumes sap hana of course you have more components like let's say and external tool who want to talk to sap hana okay this inside box is actually your hana platform that uh, that your hana platform 
which has these many component the most important ingredient or component from here is which i told you also is index server the actual database the actual data store so now let's start now let's talk about the architecture of index server so i uh, hope is this clear to everyone okay so now let's move to the next slide of this course which is where we will discuss about the architecture of index server how index server works and what is the architecture of index server which is really nothing but your real in memory database part or database component of sap hana okay how index server works what is the architecture of index server which is really nothing but your real in memory database part or database component of sap hana and all these questions will be clear after this slide okay so far as index server is concerned we have something called client side tool which is client side tool who wants to connect to sap hana there is bw tool tools or there is bi tools or there may be hana studio who want to talk to sap hana so these are different consumers who will send request to your sap hana to talk to sap hana box they send you a request so what happens when the request comes now the hana will have the first component called connection and session manager component so this is also known as access connection manager or access component so this is connection and session manager component <coughs> so this is what happens when the request comes now the hana will have the first component which is connection and session manager component now this component is responsible for creating a session whenever we send a request hey i want to connect to hana database that request come to this component air come to this component similar to the dispatcher in the app layer which okay in the app layer so it comes here the connection manager bypass this request and send it to the another component which is known as authentication authentication manager or auth manager or there is also advanced architecture where we have access we have access authenticator which is access uaa which is user authenticator okay okay access uaa so that's a component inside the hana a request is being sent to auth manager to validate user here we will send it to validate the user so now uh, you say you pass your username and password it you can can say okay so you say you pass your uh, username and password to access to the hana okay your password it can say okay a request go it to now authenticated by this component inside hana and once it's authenticated user is securely connected to hana okay and there is a session manager and this session manager who stores the details the details about connection who connected to hana at what time that is the story of session manager so all these components are clear guys so if anyone wants to connect to sap hana to whom it will connect first it will come here connection and session manager component and when the user will give the username and password what it will do it will pass it to the authenticator manager access user what it will do it will check the username password or pa username and password whether these are correct or not for example if you want to log into our uh, facebook account what it will do firstly uh, what basically we are doing we want to go to our uh, profile is just take it as a like, it's our data okay how do, uh, if uh, we will give the wrong password while we are entering the username and password in while we are logging into facebook or uh, instagram at that time if password is correct only then it will go uh, so that pass who checks that password so that is the authenticator that is an example only don't mix it up okay and all those details who has passed who has logged in there all those details will be captured here in the session manager uh, so for example uh, ha huh, if you have logged into your 
a Gmail account. Okay, take an example of Gmail account. Okay, if you have logged in there from another device, like for example, you have your Gmail ID into your phone. If you are accessing that email ID into your another device, then an email will be sent. Hey, in this mobile phone, not mobile phone, some address will be there, IP address or something. No, uh, some name will go. I think. Okay, it will tell tell us that hey, at this time, uh, at this place, it has logged in. So all those details which will be captured here in the Session manager. Hope this is clear now. Okay. Now from here, so everything. Now we have logged in. Okay. So now from here, the request is sent to something which is called as request pooler or something called as request processing and accessing control execution control. Sorry. Okay. Which is request processing and execution control component. And then this component is is the driver. Okay. Is the driver this request to corresponding sub components? So inside of SAP HANA, we have so many other components, and this is by this way whole architecture of index servers. Now I'm going to show you what is happening inside the index server. Okay. <coughs> now probably not so important to remember everything, but at least give you a good picture of what is going on inside the box that's the whole idea of this session okay so it's really really not important for you to remember every component what's happening inside but it's equally good that you know what is the inner functioning how it's functioning work inside okay how they are actually strong so restoring the data they're storing data you will get some basic hands on all these things not really okay so important from the perspective of working as a developer but we should know also have some basic knowledge. So just an extra knowledge you can take it as okay. So we'll get more comfortable what is going on inside that. The whole idea here by explaining these components, you will not be directly being seen these components. We will never going to being seen these components directly as we are not the basis guy. So the first component is our SQL processor. Okay, this SQL processor is responsible for using all the DML is data manipulation languages, all the DML commands, all your insert or your delete, all these commands which we use is submitted to this SQL processor component. Okay. And the another component is MDX, which is multi-dimensional queries engine. All your BW related MDX, which you use on BW system, that is processed by the MDS, MDX engine. Uh, one second, sorry guys. Uh, this is MDX. Okay. First is our SQL processor. Second is our MDX, multi-dimensional queries. Okay. MDX engine. All our BW related MDX. Okay. Which you we, we use on BW system and that is processed by the MDX engine. Okay. Now the third component is stored processor engine. <coughs> stored processor engine, this is the engine which is responsible for SQL scripts. Okay. Which you will see in the course. Okay. So that is, so that is what, what is processed by the uh, stored, pr stored procedure engine inside of HANA. Next is planning engine. So it's mainly used for planning scenarios in BW. That's a planning component engine. Now the next component is calculation engine. Okay. That's how the calculation views are updated. And the last is here we can have analytical engine responsible for OLAP query. Okay. So then comes up with a component which is stored component or in memory component. This is our in memory store. This is our in memory store where the data is kept in the RAM and that's actually stored part. And this part is of two types, which is, which we have also discussed in our last class in the last session, which we have discussed differently about what is column store, what is row store. We have discussed what is the difference between row store and column store. So now there may be an important interview question where uh, interview can ask you, hey, how many types of SAP HANA 
has how many types of store sap hana has so there are three types of store sap hana has which is row store column store and third one is stock store if i will go to the last slide here you can see we have the stock store which is our third type of store okay now let's wait uh, okay and now we have discussed there should be some types of this uh, there should be some type of backup and recovery just in case of power goes up okay if the data is kept in the memory then we can't take take risk on enterprise's data and that's why hana also does an automatic backup and recovery using which is something known as disk store okay what is this disk store or as so this is your actual disk store where data on different points of time is sent to the disk your hard disk write hdd just in case of disaster or some types of corruption or power outage we can recover the data and that's what it is called as disk store for this sap is using max db component max db okay max db component uh, sap has okay they are uh, they are still using this to store the data secondary okay so here we have page management and logging management also okay and we have logging management so here systems logs are stored here in this computer along with the backup data so just in case of disaster then you will be able to recover the data okay now comes to the concept of how the sap hana has evolved over the period of time how did sap hana evolve what has happened in the last couple of years in context of sap hana so guys please understand the basic of release and support pack so very important topic to have common understanding it's more it's more important to me to cover this topic quickly so sap is a product company they develop software for entire market they don't develop software for one customer so sap customers are everywhere just example as walmart hul dream eleven reliance colgate okay they they are also used uh, they also use sap behind chain so most of the companies are having sap okay sap is not uh, not normally only developing us software for walmart not only for colgate alone for hul alone they are building a product for the entire market so sap now sap hana is a very big ecosystem okay ecosystem means sap partners companies so some of the partner companies are okay they are like the customers of sap and actually who are colgate apna walmart okay some of the partner companies which are deloitte apna infosys accenture so they will they will buy actually products from sap and then they customize them according to the needs of their clients okay they will customize the solution and then they will do the implementation over here this is what you do you must be working in with some clients over the globe different clients you buy a solution from sap you customize it okay you customize it you do a lot of customization uh, as per custom development on top of implement implement bodies implement user edges and then you finally make it fit for next company which is like hul okay this is so uh, this is really a big ecosystem now imagine that is a standard drive okay so is it clear the process okay now just imagine uh, i think you have seen some t codes also like some ba01 now apna okay cv01 cv02 xk xk01 okay so just take an example of ba01 right so now so imagine there is a standard t code let's say it's ba01 uh, yeah, it's for sales order creation so let's think just think there is a bug in standard ba01 do you think this bug exists for all clients for example we have one software for sorry here or uh, hul in ba01 we have some bug huh so do you think this there is a standard bug you have standard ba01 of course okay this exists for all seriously if we if we have bug okay 
this bug is here and also here here also in hul also in colgate in walmart in other also now for every now for the very first time this uh, hul have found this bug they will report to their partner company for example this hul will report to deloitte their partner company to their partner company and then the partner company reported this bug to sap okay and a note okay reported this bug to the what did they actually do they will create a note so how does the sap will fix this bug they will create a note what is a note a note is nothing but a small piece of correction which is deliverable by sap in the middle and this node when you download and you import then the bug will be fixed now let's say after 10 to 15 days same bug will be found by colgate okay do you think will sap create a new node to fix this bug? no seriously no they will give the same node to the colgate client also similarly just take it as a one node okay if uh, hul has found a bug in va01 then they will uh, tell to the Deloitte and they will connect to SAP and SAP will create a node. For example, this node, they will tell them to implement. They will implement it and that, is, uh, that bug is fixed. After some time, if Colgate will report the same, Walmart will report the same, then will they create new? No, they will give the same node to the all those customers. Okay, That's why the SAP before you report ISO, just check if there is already a node exists. So that's what happens over a period of time. If you see there are a lot of nodes. For example, there are some more issues are coming, more bugs are coming. They will create a new node. Okay. So there are so many nodes which has SAP has created, and there are so many nodes which SAP has created in a period of time. They have created so many nodes by receiving so many bugs from different different customers and partners. The whole ecosystem is reporting these bugs. So these are the sequence of nodes which are being developed. Okay, now over the period of time, there are so many nodes and more less over a period of time, all these customers will tend to find these works. They will start finding these works of all those will get affected more or less over the period of time, keep reporting to SAP. So what will SAP do? Okay, no problem guys. Last three month works, whatever. For example, these are all the three month works notes. Okay. Whatever the you have reported, all of them, I'm going to pack them up in a packet. Okay. I'm gonna put inside this inside this packet and what will okay. Okay. Uh, I will give you this packet. What is this packet? Is you pack put this into this package and then only you report it do you report an issue to me don't report before you implement this package and this packet this all packet which is known as support pack one second guys uh, i will go back so if i will uh, okay so if i will rewind this so if uh, over the period of time multiple bugs are games okay so these are taken Take this as a note, okay? I just I told you. So what SAP will do? SAP will put all these bugs into one with this packet. And what is this packet? Is our support pack, okay? Which is like SP. SP you have listened so many times. So what is this support pack? This support pack is a collection of all the issues report over reported over one quarter or typical cycle of support package. Clear everyone? What is support pack? It's a collection of nodes. Now, similarly, if you see over one year, how many support packs you will get? As I told you, for every quarter, SAP will release one support pack. You will get so four support packs over one year. For example, uh, four support packs you will get in one year. Okay. <laughs> now, SAP says, okay, give me enough number of issues over this last one year. So, till last of the year, SAP has enough number of support packs exist in the system. For example, just take an example for 10 years, how many support packs we may have? We may have uh, for 10 years, 40 support packs we may have. Okay, for one year, four support packs, for 10 years, over obviously 40 support packs. So now what SAP will do, SAP will combine all these support packs. Okay. This uh, inside this, just take an example, like inside this also we are having different type of number of these uh, nodes okay 
SAP will now combine all the support pack together and make even a big package so some customers who have not even applied any support pack because they may not encounter any issues then they are not even implementing and that's an optional thing you can do you want you want support pack implement it okay implement this but then after one year you have got enough number of connection okay enough number of connection we have got after one year and this is known as release so, so what is release is okay what is release is one second let me increase what is this release is uh, this release is combination of support and new functionality okay uh, what is this type of really typical release of solu sap solution now release comes after how much time this 65 days or one year okay so what what sap done is sap similarly evolved sap hana okay so sap evolved over sp and release <coughs> okay so uh, is it clear what is not what is support pack what is sp how what is release everything is clear now what sap have evolved for sa for hana okay sap evolved over sp or release okay now we will quickly start this session for sap hana evolved over sp and release okay just take one minute gap okay uh, we will resume again uh, okay one minute guys So since uh, SAP HANA was a new product and uh, its support packs were not having big fixes, they were also having a lot of new features. So the support pack zero SAP HANA with release one support SP zero one SAP HANA release one that was having support pack zero that was just a better release. SAP not sure that the SAP HANA to everyone at sp0 release it have not uh, showed that it will release hana for everyone the only sure app sap hana to only few priority customer they went to top customer and they say hey i have got this new db would you like to try it for free so that was just a better release and not for customer all the ecosystems but only the few customers experienced in sap hana that is sp0 okay then sp1 sp1 was made publicly available and that's what called za that is generally availability release generally available all the partner companies and support companies and all the customers then use sap hana as generally available the next step was support pack 2 that is sp2 sap hana can now as secondary db using hana drivers <coughs> that's why is known as sidecar scenario since uh, which we have dis already discussed in our previous sessions also those who have not seen my previous sessions please go and watch it once it will really really very helpful for all of you okay in support pack 3 sap hana has now evolved to run on sap bw okay new bw but remember sap bw system should be greater than 7.31 only then SAP HANA can run. So that was also called as a pro project orange, which we have also discussed in our previous session sessions. And so called BW on HANA, your BW system can run now on fully on SAP HANA 7.31. Minimum version of SAP HANA, SAP HANA should be support pack SP03. That's how SAP can run BW systems on top of SAP HANA. With the support pack SAP SP4, SAP has enabled DXE, which is stand for direct extraction connection. Okay, direct extraction, uh, direct extraction connection data provisioning techniques. So till now, the data provisioning techniques is push approach. That means the data push to HANA, but in DXE, you can pull the data from another source into SAP HANA 
and import it in SAP HANA. Together, they have enabled PAL. Okay, in this, they have also enabled PAL, which is Productive Analytics Library, was introduced in SAP HANA. Then comes up with SP05 Support Pack 5 for SAP HANA, where SAP has released an option to run SAP HANA with Access Engine. Now you got this lightweight engine with the web server. Okay. This one, SP5, Support Pack 5. Okay. Weight engine. Uh, okay. SP, uh, SAP HANA over SAP, where SAP has released an option to run SAP HANA with access engine. Now you got this lightweight engine with the web server inside the support inside to support java based development on sap hana which we have seen in our previous slide uh, here we have seen already seen this access engine this was a lightweight application server which is enabled inside sap hana this comes up with these platforms as fury apps java we can bring our own apps and all this okay now the most important is sp6 okay where where SAP has released an option to run SAP HANA with Access Engine. Now you go this. Okay, sorry. So SP6. Now SAP HANA can run on a web system and that has become a web on HANA. Now the interviewer may ask you what is the minimum support pack of HANA to run a web on HANA? What is the minimum? So the minimum the minimum support pack of sap hana should be sp6 which is the minimum okay and what is the minimum netweaver version needed which is 7.4 okay to run sap abap system on hana as a primary database so what is the netweaver minimum version should be to run abap on hana which is uh, to as a primary database is is 7.4 and to run ABAP on HANA, the support minimum support pack should be SP6. Okay, and this has given birth to a new product which is Business Suite SAP. Okay, which is SAP Business Suite. Now, this has enabled SAP Suite on HANA. So, ABAP and HANA is the technology and Suite on HANA is the solution. Like ABAP is the ABAP is the technology and ECC is the solution. Similarly, ABAP is a technology and suit is a solution. Solution, what to buy? Anna? ABAP on HANA is a solution and suit on HANA is the sorry, ABAP on HANA is a technology and suit on HANA is a solution. Is it clear to everyone, guys? Okay, the difference between ABAP on HANA and suit on HANA. So, suit on HANA is a solution which SAP is selling you. Okay, and SAP will charge you for the solution when you buy. Say, I want to create sales order for my company. SAP will, will say, buy shoot on HANA. This is what they will sell you. Okay, guys. Now comes up with the 7. SP7. So, they have started SDA, which is Smart Data Access. SP then comes up with the SP8. HANA application can install on Red Hat, Linux. Okay. Previously, HANA was only supporting SUSE Linux. Now, you can install HANA appliance on Red Hat Linux. Also, it is possible to start. Okay. SP7, where they have introduced the concept of MDC. Okay. Second, they have introduced the concept of MDC, which is multi tenant data containers to support cloud. It's like Uber pool, where sharing of pop, caps pop. Oh, so many of you have used like uh, Uber pool, uh, like if you are going to somewhere, okay. Uber pool, uh, okay. Uber pool is like if you want to go to somewhere, uh, I think Hana, has, oh, sorry, uh, Uber has started this Uber pool, like if it's cost uh, there to go there, if there is more than, uh, if someone is also going there, then we can share our cap. It's same like that. For example, if you want to purchase one HANA box for your small company, okay, it's same, same here as Uber pool and here also. I think so many of you have already experienced this, okay. If you want, uh, now this, uh, this one, 
okay if you want for example sorry if you want to purchase one hana box for your small company it's very expensive and costly what do you do you will share a hana db with other companies and that's called multi tenant data content concept in hana that was introduced with sp9 so sp9 is clear guys uh, now blah blah is there in some places like if someone is going to any place and if you uh, like wants to split their fare then he can take more guys and uh, they for them also cost is more uh, sorry fare is very less same is like with sp9 for example if a very small company want to purchase any hana box and it's more cost is very cost is very high in that case this mdc concept is there where sap hana has released this mdc which is multi tenant data containers to support cloud okay theek okay? hai then comes up is sp10 high availability and disaster recovery okay then comes up with sp11 sap introduced access advanced engine which now supports uh, supports node js programming access advanced architecture then it also supports python and bring your on run time then comes up with sp12 workload analysis production and okay Let me see. One second. Okay, and then this was the last support pack of SAP Release One. This was the last pack of SAP Release One. Then new release was introduced. SAP Hana 2.0 was released in the support pack. Okay, SP Zero Backup Encryption, Third Party Tools, SP One Document Store, SP Two EML with Google Tensor. flow integration okay is it clear to everyone okay just wait a minute